internet who is getting off on that, though. You know that. That's the worst part. <laughs> the fetish is coughing. Like... You know yes, the phlegm, baby. The phlegm. I love it when they cough. <laughs> <laughs> cough more into the microphone. Do it. No, that's why I'm so not, because I'm coughing in between every other sentence. I want to so. hear all the phlegm in your throat. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> It's like uh, nose cum. Oh, <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> oh <God. laughs> Sir, please, you're upsetting the guests. <laughs> All right, I'm fixing chat. Don't worry, chat. Chat is being fixed, chat. Gosh, chat. So That's aggressive. Right. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fix chat. I'm doing it. All right, there you go. You are now a, a character on the stream. That's how it works. And the thumbnail's fixed. It's all good to go. Oh, getting so good at this. Oh. It used oh. to take me like five minutes. Now I get it done in like 30 seconds. So I, 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 someone posted a picture um, of this tweet that I think is pretty nifty. Hmm. I don't know what to fully think about it, though. Uh, we got someone saying, low key, I want Ryan to just die already so people will finally give him the respect. <laughs> <laughs> what? I don't know if this person loves him or hates him. I want him to die so he'll get respect. He just said, Oh my god. <laughs> what a strange thing to say. Make so Daddy strange. Ryan a martyr. <laughs> Oh my god, what a, that's, yeah, that's probably the most bizarre way of supporting a creator I've ever seen. I hope he dies, but for a good cause. <laughs> well, you know, martyrs live forever. Okay. This, this little video is, is funny. What are god. we really looking at here? <laughs> Emergency lockdown initiated. <laughs> what the fuck even? <laughs> that's uh, that's fucking Baba Vesubad, right? Something mm. like that. Yeah, 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 it is. It's like one of the only decent scenes of that film where Pierce Batman knew, just yeeted everybody. This new made that probably thought that Phasma was a character. That was their mistake. Oh, well, they learned their Whoops. lesson. It's crazy because a lot of people speculated that she would come back for Rise of Skywalker. It's like Rise of Skywalker doesn't even know she exists. Like that film just completely Never forgot about it. Her. I completely forgot that she died at the end. Most people do because she died twice. <laughs> it's confusing as fuck. It's like, oh, wait, this character again? Okay. This is like an everyday thing for you. There's something like you could dying. say about the, the sequel trilogy. Death just. Death's a concept that's very flimsy in the Star Wars universe yeah, as of the sequel much. trilogy. Well, do you remember when when uh the, uh the Force Awakens uh, came out and they they really pushed Phasma like there were all kinds of toys yeah. and stuff about mm -hmm. oh this is gonna be this epic character is gonna be in everything. <laughs> well, there's that interview oh. where she says Captain Phasma is a Boba Fett style character. And it's like what does that mean? I think <laughs> she has a helmet. Character. I think she meant that you barely find anything about them. You just see them. They're cool. You're like oh. Mm. I feel really bad for kids who got Captain Phasma uh, figures. What if people then... like name their kid Phasma? <laughs> well, how do you people? How do you think about the thousands and thousands of children that are named Khaleesi or or Daenerys? <laughs> Just don't ask oh. where that comes from. Like, where the kids it's like, like what'd you, you name me after? Adolf. You're like, oh, you know, nothing. Just Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we had uh, someone on who did tell us that the world was still a better place with Daenerys rather than without it. So, what do you have to say to that? Uh, <laughs> that was a painful stream to listen to. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, everyone's entitled to their valid and equally accurate opinions, okay? That's how it works. No, the wonderful wrong. guest. Even when they're wrong. <laughs> when they're hideously wrong. Mm -hmm. Poor, poor King's Landing. How long is it going to take to recover from that? I've just moved to a different city at that they're, point. They're, they're in medieval times too. Like that's going to take ages. Where are you going to go? 
Uh, the next city. Well, you say we you can move. To... It's like, who's gonna move? Everyone's dead anyway. <laughs> it's gonna be like a few corpses crawling away. That's a problem it's a buyer's market for real estate, man. You don't have to worry. Yeah, plenty of free real estate. It's free real estate. Well, always looking on the bright side, I see. I feel like nobody's not gonna have a job because so many people died that, you know, workers are in high demand at that point. I would just so go to S also. Die, that there's point. no one to pay the people who are still alive. <laughs> oh, that would be a thing. Plundering you that place, there'd be all kinds of armies. goodies. Go inside. Mm -hmm. There's like there's no defenses on the main castle. There's got to be like a like a room a of treasure. gold or something. <laughs> Get in there, folks. Yeah. For those of you who are left, obviously. No. <laughs> So yeah, that leaves us with uh, EFAP number 69. It was actually planned... Welcome to our Game of Thrones the, uh, episode. Yeah, I was going to say, Game of Thrones making it back into the discussion. People, I've seen people speculate, like, you got to do a Game of Thrones episode. It's like, uh, at this point, we'd have to find some kind of, like, Tismy video to cover it, because Game of Thrones is pretty much dead forever now, right? Like uh, Until George Martin releases the next book. But I, I am very much of the opinion that George intentionally set D and D up to a degree to get people to come back and read his books again. Why? I, I, I feel like he did it because I know he's kind of a sniveling weasel, and I, I just feel like, <laughs> I don't know if it's gonna work though for you, George, because you made everybody hate the IP. <laughs> was it really his fault? <laughs> I don't know how much it well, was. According but... to that one guy. Oh yeah. Uh, fuck. Who George. was? Was that? Was that Yasin as well? I can't remember who. I can't remember if that was him. Yeah, some people think that he it was all like a setup, but I mean, as far as I know, he told them about the ending and they just did whatever. But I mean, I think that, you know, in retrospect, a lot of it, again, was because they thought they were going to get the Star Wars IP and they were just like, oh, fuck this. Um, however, we know how that turned out. Yeah, they've dropped that now, too. Probably for the best. I don't see Thank that God. ending well. Yeah. They'd get murdered. Mm -hmm. But hey. Dolls is in a pretty good position too, right? It's all going great. Yeah. Um. So yeah, this is this is EFAP sixty nine. We we had no idea what to do other than just you know decide. We made it our most diverse episode ever. Four females and a male. How how's that? Uh, what do you th what do you think? Male. Oh. Oh, yeah. oh no. That's right. right. I'm the bad. And uh, yeah, so you know, no one can say EFAP was uh, male dominated in some kind of disgusting misrepresentation. Um, <laughs> and you know, we're even going to be covering a female creator today. So, as in in, in, in the infinite words of Major Lee, you do get to look at women in this stream, and that alone <laughs> is enough of a positive, right? That's a thing he said. <laughs> you might get blocked now. Finally, Mahler. I might get what? We're all from Ginny, you might finally get blocked. Oh no! Oh yeah, that's true. Actually, well, Whatever they can't complain this do. time though, because we have females on the on the roster, right? Like they're not allowed to complain. Isn't that no, how I that think works? I think we can still. Uh, I think that the the thing is that if if women do say anything, then we we're self hating, right? Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it was worth a shot, I guess. Oh yeah. well. Um. But yeah, there's uh, there's there's not much in terms of catching up or, or announcement stuff. Uh, Doom went back down, only to come back up as the, the EFAP movies because it's just a Zephyr is an asshole. Um, hey. that's a that's a battle that'll go on infinitely. Speaking of infinitely, part one of <gasps> Infinite Crisis came out. Uh, two is on the way, as is three and four and five. In fact, Rags, you and I are watching four and five tomorrow. Yes. Yeah, we are. How We're exciting. gonna watch four and five tomorrow. We're gonna keep up with the riveting story of all of these characters and there's their story and the things and whatever the fuck is going on <laughs> in this universe. And then, uh, I think it's like a week from now or whatever, Batwoman kicks back up. You you excited? Yeah. <laughs> Wait. Did it, it? It gets a second season. It's not well. Yeah. We've got sixteen more episodes of season one, and it's got a season two. Oh Jesus! Just infinite entertainment, folks. <laughs> All kinds Crisis of everything. On infinite Batwoman. How do you go from? How do you go back? How do you back from? You go back from saving infinite Earths, like the concept of reality itself. You have rescued, and you go back <laughs> to catching 
criminals in an alley. And the, it's Rat, Alice Rat, as well. I will, I will be Bat real. Woman. I'll be real Again, with you on something. I'm a huge fan of Batwoman, the comic book character, not whatever this shit is. <laughs> I haven't seen it. Okay. Not Ruby there, Rose. You it's haven't Batman seen it? Okay. Wow. No, because I like Batwoman. Why would I put myself through that torture? I actually really Why do you love hate Batman. Ruby Rose? What's what what? <laughs> Why? Because she hates lesbians. No, I I very much like lesbians being half of one myself. But <laughs> uh, there's there's a story that happens in the middle of the J.H. Williams um, I run on Batwoman where like it, there's a tie-in with Wonder Woman where it goes full Lovecraft and like giant tentacle monsters invade Gotham. Mm. And it just manages to come back from it. It's great. It's fantastic. It's wonderful. And then it got canceled by DC. Guess, guess what? Because Dan Didio said that no DC characters were allowed to be married and he canceled Batwoman's uh, marriage to her partner. That was back in 2014, 2013. So, oh, how things have changed. <laughs> oh. Well... Do you know what some of the biggest like payoff of the first set of episodes of season one were? Um, there was a guy in a restaurant who said that he doesn't want to serve gay people, and so she built a gay bar next to his establishment. Oh, fucking, you're kidding me. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> there were people in sitting, there were housewives sitting at home who were so woke going, you go, girl. Yeah, you that's, go. That's Batwoman. What an amazing show. She just showed him. They are so okay. invested in the, the please, shallowest read the, show. Please, guys, read the J. I, I'm saying it to the audience. Please read the J.H. Williams run on Batwoman. It has amazing art. It has good stories. And it doesn't, like, shove this horrible crap down your throat. It's actually well written. God damn. Why they have to do my girl wrong like this? There was, a, there was a tweet talking about how, like, men don't like the Batwoman TV show because men want, like, villains in their heroes. And, like, referencing stuff like Iron Man, I guess. Um, and it's just funny because... Batwoman, out of all the shows and movies and stories I've watched about superheroes, even anti-heroes, like, she's one of the worst. She, she lets a lot of people die. Um, yeah, she's horrible. For no terrible. fucking reason. She's horrible. The, I think one of the best examples of sort of highlighting this this attitude from her is that there's all these people who have just fallen from, like, a runaway elevator just crashing into the ground. They're all scattered out in this, like, lobby. There's blood, mm -hmm. they're like screaming, and then a Batwoman, as Kate Kane, walks past them all to go home and put on a bat suit and then come back. It's like, maybe you could help. No, no, <laughs> she didn't just, no, Mahler, she didn't just put on the bat suit. That's when she upgraded it with the hair. Oh, and she and gave it a spray, yeah. Spray paint. Yeah, she didn't just put on, she didn't just go home to put on her suit. She gave it a makeover. <laughs> it's you so know, there's a way terrible. to do this right. Daredevil totally Yellow does this. Uh, in Daredevil Yellow, it's shown that like there's a scene where where Daredevil's trying to he he and the owl fall into the into the uh, the bay the outside owl. of yeah outside of New York and uh and he can't say, I think it's in Daredevil Yellow and he can't save them and it's and he like thinks he dies and th there's ways to do that with particularly when you talk about street level characters who don't have infinite power but going home to go put on your makeup uh bro what are you doing <laughs> well yeah it's, it's like wow that's that's what you got for a female-led tv show you're like she has to just she, she has to do that before helping people Oof, okay women she empowerment go, she has to go put on her face <laughs> <laughs> oh it's so awful i they feel so empowered out. right now um but yeah, uh, so that's awful. Everything's awful. We were just talking about how everything's awful. Um, what, what was it? Do Doctor Who? Jay was letting me know Who? that uh, that's that's going real well. What was it? Seven percent that the Rotten Tomatoes has dropped to. Audience score six. Six, six oh, now. <laughs> oh my god. Well, let yeah. me take a look. See, Rotten Tomatoes, Doctor Who. <laughs> so we're gonna. Oh no, this is not the right season. They're trying they're, they're like they're showing me the not current uh -oh. season. Oh, it's up to 8. It's up to 8%. Mm. However, it's up to 8% after significantly more user ratings. Mm -hmm. But the critics love it. What a oh, shock. Good. It is. <laughs> I'll show you show you a picture here of our rotten tomatoes thingamabobber. Yep. Mm. Yeah, that sounds about right. Eighty percent uh, uh, by the critics and eight percent by the audience eight. seems legit. I think that's the biggest difference I've ever seen. That might be. That is. It might pretty be. Yeah. 
Because even Batwoman was like in the teens. This isn't even double digits. <laughs> That's fucked up. The question is, how much money do they have to lose? Because they are still making money on this shit. And I mean, with okay, with BBC shows in particular, there's an issue because everyone has to pay for a TV license, right? So people kind of get charged this money no matter what if they want to watch TV to fund this garbage. But like, how much money do these companies have to lose before they realize this probably isn't a good idea? Oh, and have you guys talked about the new Captain Marvel writer? Because I have a lot to say about Kelly Sue DeConnick. Oh, we yeah. can we can jump to that if you want. I just want to say space for all. What a strange tagline. Space for all? That is a <laughs> Oh, I didn't even notice that. Fuck off. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my space for all. Eight As... <laughs> percent. <laughs> also, Jay wants me to read out the thing that I that I was telling you about guys about earlier. So this is apparently from the newest episode, I guess. Um the Doctor deliberately tricked the now brown master into getting captured by the Nazis so he'd face their race hate. He wasn't even <laughs> doing anything evil at the time. It wasn't a solution to anything. He didn't stop his plan or anything. It it's just something solution. she decided to do. Yeah, they got that coon. <laughs> this is very in, in line with the Doctor's... That's that's very Doctor-like. That's, that's something the Doctor typically does. It's Throw just, people to uh, the Nazis. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, uh, yeah. So, Captain Marvel two is apparently being written by um, who Kelly Sue DeConnick. What's 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 your take on on this person? Because I don't know anything about them. I don't think. Okay, so I do. I've read everything mm -hmm. she's ever written for for Marvel and DC and for um, Image. Uh, so, Kelly Sue DeConnick is somebody that I actually thought had some talent. Uh, she wrote some pretty good issues on Aquaman. They weren't fantastic. It's not Peter David, but it's decent. She wrote four issues on Ghost, which is a very good series in general, but they weren't fantastic mm -hmm. for issues. She wrote a mediocre um, indie series called Pretty Deadly. And astonishingly, I, I saw an article that was written about her regarding her being the, the writer for Captain Marvel that described her as, and I quote, an uber feminist. <gasps> All right. That's a good sign. And she... Yeah, she wrote a series called Bitch Planet, which is literally Orange is the New Black, <laughs> but in space. Oh, <laughs> bitch Planet. <laughs> Uh, yes. It is about a plant a prison planet for women. It's actually readable. I I it's not complete. I mean it's not good, but it, it's readable. And however, despite the 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 niceties I just laid at Kelly Sue DeConnick and said that I thought she had talent, if you want to know where the trope of Carol Manvers comes from, she is the origin. She 100% invented the idea of, of Captain Marvel as being a man-hating, horrible, just insufferable person. And that is 100% Kelly Sue DeConnick. So, of course, of course, Marvel would pick, <laughs> Miss Disney would pick her to okay. write Captain Marvel 2. Yeah, that's who we got, is, is the woman who wrote Bitch. Hmm. Well... Um, I think we can expect that Captain Marvel 2 will be fantastic. Oh, something, something that's just reminded me of it, like, just, uh, when you know that the writer's gonna be injecting some stuff into the story. You got, I'm assuming you guys have heard about, everyone's very upset with, uh, uh, Patrick Stewart's comments recently about the card oh, show. God. He said, it's, it, he said something like it's gonna, it's gonna tackle, like, the, the evils of Trump and Brexit or something, right? Yeah, I'm I'm curious. I mean, like Star Trek always. I as you guys know, I'm a big Trekkie more than I am a Star Wars fan. Trek always, uh, you know, discusses uh, hey, speak political Romulan. stuff. <laughs> no, she's well. Actually, Trek. they're they're related languages. Close enough. Twi'lek have, is what I, she speaks. Yeah, mm. Twi'lek. But uh, Trek, you know, Trek's always discussed political issues, uh, but. Guys, really? It's never been this overt. And I'm saying it's never been this overt. And I'm comparing that to the, the original series episode where they couldn't discuss race issues. So they had one guy's ha his right side mm -hmm. of his face painted white and the left side of his face That's painted crazy. black and then vice versa and had them hate each other. And it's never been this overt. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you. Well, well see, they did it with, you know, other races. Or, excuse me, like alien races. So that because they live in this idealized universe. And so when they do it and they deal with those kind of issues, it's always with aliens because they've already been able to overcome it. I saw part of the article where he was saying that he didn't like that it was too safe. And I was like, that, that's the point, though, is that we already were able to overcome that. 
as a species. That was one of the greatest things about Star Trek. It is. I was. I've. I just rewatched DS Nine in in its entirety, and I was sitting there like maybe I was really really sick like maybe five days ago, crying at an episode of DS Nine where it deals with race relations in the nineteen fifties. But there's also an episode in the in the last season in the seventh season of DS Nine where it's where Quark literally is Trump. He wants to make Ferenginar great again, and that was mm. made in nineteen ninety eight, I believe, nineteen ninety nine. So you know, Trek's always done this stuff, but. Could you be a little bit more, like, not on the nose about it, guys? I, I guess they we'll to have to see. Time to visit Rosa Parks. <laughs> they did that Doctor Who, did they? Yeah, there's a Rosa Parks episode. Yes. Um. Yeah. Because, like, I, I'm not invested in Star Trek, but as soon as that Picard show comes out, I'm going to be interested to see uh, what everyone's reactions are. Just see see have what they're doing. Have you watched doing. all of Star Trek, though? Sorry. Have you watched all of Star Trek? No, I'm not invested in Star Trek. Like, I haven't seen anything beyond like a handful of episodes here and there, I think. Uh, yeah. <laughs> my, my, again, my exact... My, my opinion's exactly... Uh. Oh, I'm not allowed <laughs> to not have seen it. a thing? How dare you? No, 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 my opinion is is about this. Uh, I think of what they're trying to do. Oh. Well, think of all the new fans they'll generate with the Picard show. It'd be great. Right, because that works so well with everything else they've tried to do this with. I th well, Star Wars' fan base is reinvigorated. Uh, Doctor Who's, clearly. Game of Thrones. Well, Game of Thrones doesn't have exactly... I don't think anybody would say Game yeah. of Thrones ran an agenda, did it? It was just terrible. <laughs> like, there was no, like, oh, I was clearly trying to push this... Because they destroyed what a lot of people... Like, the whole Slay Queen thing with, with Daenerys, that's out the window. When she killed children, it was like, oh... Can't, can't mm -hmm. really support well, like, why, why still root for Anakin? What are you gonna do? What are you gonna <laughs> do if you if you're you're a little kid, you're a young girl and you grow up with the name Daenerys or Khaleesi? Because Khaleesi was apparently the more common one. Well, now your name is essentially either Fuhrer Adolf or Hitler <laughs> or Adolf. What are you gonna... Mom, why did you call like me that? that mustache. Well, I mean, some little girls can use that to their advantage. They'd be like, "Oh, you want to piss me off? I'll stick my dragons on you." Just like King's Landing. I mean, dragons aren't real, though. That's the problem. But I'm innocent. Yeah, but I'm think innocent. about Shul. Because <laughs> everyone that's named Khaleesi is, I'm assuming, still a child. I can imagine Yeah, I think that's, that, that trend started about maybe like seven years ago when the show started to gain. I, but I think there's like, the last time I checked on it, which has been a while, it's like there's like 5,000, 6,000 kids in the U.S. named Khaleesi. <laughs> um, Someone sent me something just a moment ago. There is about 1,600, 1,700 people with the uh, first name Phasma. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Why the? Okay. I oh, it's all Phasma Jones. It's a strange <laughs> face name, but all right. Not going to judge. Phasma, Mc Phasma McDonald. <laughs> Phasma McDonald. <laughs> Phasma <laughs> Phillips. I like how if they go to change their name legally, they're like, they go to ask why, then they check it. They're like, oh. Well, it sounds uh, like never um, mind. No reason needed. <laughs> like a Duck Dodger's name is like I'm Phasma Jackson. I'm like, oh <laughs> my god. I mean, it would be a pretty, yeah. It sounds like a good pseudonym. Like you're a famous writer or or, or uh, some kind of it's some like, kind of something. I I almost said Jeff Gordon. I was a Flash Gordon. It's a Flash Gordon, right? You have um. And now I'm thinking about the Papa John's guy, and I have no idea why. Like Flash. Think about eating Flash forty Phasma. pizzas in a month. Brains, man. How do they work? How many pizzas do I eat in a month? The the Papa John said he ate forty pizzas in a month. You like don't know how big month, the pizzas were. Month. You don't know how big. That sounds glorious. Yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah, but that's Papa John's the life is of a king. Fine, Papa, I guess. Let's be real. Mm -hmm. Papa John's is pretty low on my tier of pizza. I'm gonna order. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't really eat much. Like I don't do delivery stuff, so I don't really know to rank them. Our family would get Little Caesars a bunch. Little Caesars is the shit. Five dollars for a big ass pizza. You go in there like, yo, I'd like a five dollar hot and ready, well, and they'd be like, hot okay, do you want cheese? Do you want uh, supreme, or do you want you know pepperoni? And what happened to Big Caesar? Pepperoni. Big Caesar? Yeah. Fucking. I re I refuse to call it anything but Parvis Caesaris. Is that Should alien Parvis. language again? It's no, it's just Latin for Little Caesars. It's W. It's no V in Latin. A V sound. Ave, true to Kaisar. Ave. Ave, shit. I fucked it up. Damn. 
Fucking bringing out the 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 the, the ancient lead speak only to get corrected. Oof. Big oof. <laughs> um. So yeah, I suppose uh, if there's if there's nothing else, we can we can talk about uh, a few things people are going to be expecting. Uh, everyone wants us to cover the Ralph video, the Ralph video. There's not even I don't even need to be more specific than that. But um, uh, Rags and I are making it through all of the films that Joker ripped off. Um, just checking them out, getting a refresh, we and got um, one down. Well, two go. down. One down. Two down. We got yeah. We got one to go. Two down. Two down. One and, to go. Um, and we checked out Parasite. Uh, so yeah. And Parasite I think I'm gonna try and get to watch all of the uh the films that are apparently deserving of Oscars well before Joker is, just out of curiosity. But um, uh, like like someone on Twitter said <laughs> um. But... <laughs> Sorry. What do you... Someone said Phasma Hut in the chat, and I'm like, yeah, let's order, let's order something from Phasma, Phasma Hut. Hut. <laughs> uh, there's, there's people on Twitter that would be like, like Joker as, as a screenplay is much worse than, and then named a bunch of movies, and included in the list was uh, Parasite and Endgame. I don't know why someone would think Endgame's screenplay <laughs> is stronger uh, than Joker's. No. <laughs> yeah, no. Oh my goodness, Mahler, somebody sent me a message about how many someone said the total number of clones in the Star Wars clone army you know how many there were apparently this guy's saying he looked it up and to, to see how many clones there were and he uh, says there was one he says there's 1.7 billion clones were in the Grand Army of the Republic neat <laughs> that's a lot that's a lot of clones probably not as many as all of the troopers in Palpatine's Series yeah, of thousands say, of how ships. Many, how many? How many people were manning the ships in Palpatine's giant? I don't. Th I don't know if that gets into the billions. Like even the supremacy only held like two and a half million people. Don't ask me where they came from. Well, how many people does it take to man a super star destroyer? I don't know. Uh, but I guess let us go to Wikipedia. <laughs> that that one point seven destroyer. <laughs> That 1.7 billion, is that, like, over the course of the entire time clones have, like, existed, I'm guessing? Let's see. Um, I... It says, it says, someone said it was, the EFAT, it was in the EFAT podcast chat, but I don't know, that's just what I'm being told. That seems like a lot, though. Watch those wrist rockets. I mean, consider, considering that, like, okay, I only have Star Trek knowledge, but... Like a galaxy class starship probably has a, a crew complement of like twelve hundred at an absolute minimum. So, and that's not something that can blow up a planet. I mean, they kind of can, but not necessarily. So, how much do those star destroyers have? Let I, I it's got to be like a thousand people, I would imagine, to man a ship that. What ship? Any, a, a galaxy class, which is the Enterprise, um, the Enterprise D. Quite a uh, bunch. From yeah, it's gonna be quite a bunch. Mm. Yeah, if you want to keep it fully operational, uh you know, multiple shifts and all that. Yeah, I could believe it. Well, let me look. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just assuming that's not like a current... That, that was the number of active clones. It was probably clones across the entire Clone War, I'm guessing. Uh, it says uh, the Enterprise about... Um, it was capable of carrying over 6,000. Yeah, but, but the crew... had a usual complement of 1,014 crew and civilians... Okay, so I guess so. the actual okay, so the yeah, the civilians. See, that's where I got that number from in my head. Uh, so probably in terms of a skeleton crew, you could probably uh, man a, a galaxy class vessel with maybe like five hundred people. So let's let's go with like a, a minimum estimate. Uh, I know the Voyager has a the Voyager, which is a sovereign class vessel, has one hundred and forty seven crew complement, uh, which is much smaller than a galaxy class vessel. So if we go with the absolute minimum of, and this is me using Star Trek to Star Wars. You would need probably like two hundred people on every single one of those superstar destroyers. Where did all those clones come from? And and we we see them blot out the entire screen. So how would you get all those clones from? But whatever. And they and when the supremacy <laughs> holds two and a half million people, you wonder like what are they doing? Yeah, what well, they, they, when <laughs> you what have you two do? and a half million, surely there's an actual like society aboard it, like an actual economy, a whole existence there. Like there's probably. Factions, even like they're split into like, oh, the left side of the fucking ship, they sew up their own ass. <laughs> the right yeah, side, there, there are stories about oh, people who live and die on the same starship, and 
all that sort of stuff. Yeah, I would just imagine that that would be a fascinating sort of look into the the world of the supremacy, the the amount of people there. Like, because the way they portray it is, it's just hallways with stormtroopers walking down them constantly. Yeah, That's all it is. it's just just hallways with yeah, just stormtrooper hallways. We they gotta go places, not too quickly though, but they gotta you know go some over there. They got. Let me look at how wide it was again. Well, how many how <laughs> many destroyers do you think were in that scene? Oh, it was. Wasn't it like, I feel like it was like 15 destroyers individually on certain shots. That's, very nice. That's just the ones that we could see in frame. I know, it's crazy. I don't know why they did that. They were like, the First it's, Order is just insane. Like, it's the resources. 61 kilometers wide. That was after they'd lost the, the Super Death Star too. Okay, so with my calculator real quick, if we have 50, let's say we see 15 Star Destroyers, or just with that, and we give it like a, a minimum crew complement, that's 3,000 uh, Stormtroopers or clones, right, as an absolute minimum. If I say that, that the crew complement would probably be for a ship that large of 200. Oh my god, I put Rise of Star Wars Final Battle. Fuck <laughs> The Rise of Skywalker Final Battle. <laughs> Sorry, this is, I'm getting off topic, but this is it's just so stupid. Well, you, are you trying to highlight that there was just a staggering amount of soldiers in, in the First Order's army and that they just don't give a fuck? Like, the whole film doesn't seem to give a fuck. I mean, how, feeding 3,000 soldiers alone. They fed them with the Force. Like, Oh, I guess you can you do that with a force now? I don't fucking know. Right? <laughs> the Palpatine probably strange, fed them snow clones. Strange and unnatural powers, right? Strange and unnatatural. I will transfer my transfer my calories to you mm. using the force. And I just imagine like Sheev like being like fed like with a feeding tube, just mass amounts of calories and transferring. <laughs> Because when you look oh, at oh, that's the... way more than fifteen. Well, no, I was referring to TLJ. If you're talking about this movie, then yeah, it's yeah. over a thousand, as far as I'm and aware. And it's like fucking Bonkersville, Nick. What the fuck? Right. I I don't know. If we imagine a crew complement of two hundred, which is again is a pretty low estimate, I would say for a ship of that size. There is a staggeringly low amount of Tie Fighters, considering all of the uh, the Star Destroyers too, but. If we say it's there's 500 ships, would that be a reasonable estimate? I can't believe that, like, if Palpatine just put a put a couple of them above atmosphere, just a couple, and, um, you know, that might have worked out for the better. Because why keep them below atmosphere? What is the benefit of that if they can't have shields? It's a very strange movie. Well, they also can't figure out how to go up. So. Well, Palpatine can push them up. We saw it in the beginning. He can just, just push them on up. <laughs> Do it, Palpatine. Save your whole army. You weird person. <laughs> like, this strategy. When I, Googled, when I Googled Rise of Skywalker Final Battle to get pictures, the second thing that pops up is Star Wars. What happened in the final battle in the Rise of Skywalker? I'm like, fuck if I, I know, man. Know. No one knows. <laughs> like, no one knows what the hell happened. How do you how did they write the up thing in, in like the boardroom and not have people just break out laughing? They were like, Do you, do you really think audiences are this stupid? They're like, I think we could get away with it. I think we can. Like, you know what? I think that I think that we just I just let's just go for it, guys. We're gonna have a thousand star destroyers with a, a thousand Death Star lasers. We'll have Poe say it, but Poe will confirm oh. this is totally normal. It'll so I've got sense. some bad news, Aiden. It looks like the, it is not a crew of two hundred. I have no idea. Was... That was in making a Star Trek estimate based on a galaxy class vessel, which I think yeah. is smaller. Your, your estimate was a wee bit low. It turns out that according to Wikipedia, uh, the, the crew is 29,585. Each Star Destroyer. <laughs> yeah, this is the, the Zeiston. See, that, that even to me seems excessive, but all right. It is excessive, but that's what the, it is. It's got let's a crew a, of basically 30K. Let's give a conservative estimate and say there's 500 Star Destroyers. That's oh. fourteen million five hundred and forty-two thousand five hundred people required to make. Oh, dead! You just picture like there's a, there's a dude with like uh like you like popcorn. He's like get your popcorn here <laughs> to sell everybody like to keep them all alive because fucking hell, they need a lot of vending machines. Maybe Actual they were just a special stormtrooper. kind of stormtrooper that just doesn't require nutrients in any way, shape, or form. They're just self-sufficient. They don't even poop. They're all robots. This is this is why you, 
That's why they had clones in the prequels, because in droids, it's so much easier to explain than... I don't know, there's just loads of people. Where'd they come from? Where did <clears throat> where did Snoke get or Snoke Palpatine? He made Whatever. an army of crones. Where did she have get fourteen million people? They he captured them from the planets. Mm -hmm. Just I guess he just went around capturing kids. Well, like there's the million of them. Red Light Media sort of vaguely mentioned it. It's like, oh, did he conjure them? Just like Jesus Christ, conjure like, like <sighs> he could have though. Like that's yeah. a thing now. He could have actually, in Star Wars canon, it just, oh, an army. Because, okay. Yeah, because like the writers, they really like because we make jokes about how the Force is essentially used as a cop out, but it's like they really pushing it. Like whenever you're stuck in terms of writing, the Force did it. It was like it used to be a big deal to make an army. Now it's just like they just pop up everywhere. Nobody There's probably a, a Second Republic hidden on the moon or whatever. Oh, um, but yes, uh, we'll, 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 I don't know how that tangent even happened. We'll cover the Ralph video uh, in the future, as we will cover Season 1 of Mandalorian. That's pl planning on being done as well. Um, and, and Infinite Crisis all coming out. There's loads of just things that are going to happen. Um, also, I was made aware that uh, Movie Circle Jerk, the subreddit that's a big fan of, of EFAB and, and us specifically, they are yeah. banning Yay. anybody who is uh, associated in, in positive ways to um, EFAB. Just like strictly banning anyone, yeah, just... like just accounts that are linked to the subreddit. Well, just the Mola subreddit, or just people who speak positively about EFAP, they just get banned now. Oh my goodness, you can't even speak positively of EFAP. <laughs> so, you gotta stop doing that, guys. That's not nice. They're trying to talk about how much we're awful people, and you keep ruining it. So, uh, yeah, um, and, and apparently, the ban message they give everybody is he won't fuck you. Um, they don't oh, know that, for sure. Me, me and Rags, we, right. uh, you know, we'll decide yeah, that for ourselves. Uh, we have an open relationship. So, yeah. <laughs> Very presumptuous of them. Um, don't don't take the message too seriously, you know? They, they don't know. They think they do, but they don't. Uh, so, yeah, fun times on that subreddit, as per usual. But, um, with that, I'm pretty much good to go on this, on this main event. There is a link to the watch together. We're going to be checking out... Um, Good old Je Jebby Nichols. Uh, I, I know that we're not allowed to. Um, we've been told several times by the world. But this time we'll be okay, because we have brought uh, several women with us. So uh, they act as um, an artificial safe. barrier of blockage, if you will. Um, but, but yeah, so the interesting thing about this video, this is her TLJ video, is that uh, it's going to have aged rather poorly um, because of a lot of things to like about TLJ, let's say, is is is, is for for a lot of TLJ fans has been, have been changed by TROS. Um, that combined with the fact that uh, we'll probably see some arguments we're, we're aware of, but we'll we'll happily respond to them. And you know, it's it's not even that long of a video, twenty three minutes. We can get through that in just under a few days, right? Yeah, I think so. Excellent. Um, I might say for episode sixty nine, I, I I haven't discussed this with Mahler. But today I'm I'm identifying as a woman for today. There you go. So if Full you could use she her pronoun sure pronouns, I would enjoy that. I would. I, I, I think will I would, respect your pronouns. That right? would validate my existence, whatever that means. Mm. I don't know what it means, but it already feels good. Yeah, and, and at that point, like a ratio of four to one. I'm just saying, like, can you really say EFAP is four a sexism one. anymore? Four to one. All right, is everyone ready for this wondrous yeah. adventure? This mm -hmm. is the day. So I'm already oh here. Oh my god, calm down, Jenny. I wasn't ready. <laughs> <laughs> the okay. top ten worst reasons you hated the Last Jedi. To be fair, I watched like four minutes of this yesterday, and then I got oh, bored. Right. So. Oh. Well then, we're gonna have to try and make it entertaining. So I'm already hearing a lot of stuff about the Last Jedi. The lighting is much better, even though this is in the past. So I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> The light was better. <laughs> I already said I liked it, and I recorded that before people were making reviews, so who, I didn't know it was a hot take about, at the I time. If Wait, oh, just yeah, I, not I guess. Not your job, it's fine. Just to, I just, I don't know who she could possibly be talking about. Well, people were split on TLJ. Loads of people came out super positive about it. 
right? Like, from I was what I remember. At first. Yeah, but lots of people felt... like it was amazing. Lots of people like Ugh, didn't like it. Yeah, uh, I think a lot of people they didn't they couldn't quite express why or what, but they yeah. knew something was up. Like something ain't right here. This, this, a... this wasn't the Force Awakens. Because I think if you had like, let's just pretend for a second that Last Jedi was perfect, except it had the Holder maneuver still in it. I think people will be able to easily identify their issue with the movie. They'd be like, oh, it's that one bit because that changed, blah, blah, blah. But when you have so many things at once clashing, like Luke's character, oh my god, the concept of, of the Force, oh my god, space battles, oh my god. How much this, ah. the plot doesn't make sense with chasing each other, ah, it's too much, I don't know what I think about this movie anymore. The fucking, the first shot Ray takes on the Falcon and she gets a triple kill. Fucking <laughs> triple kill. Four ships lined up perfectly in that line, and she just happened to be aiming at the other. It's in, fuck off. You just hate women. Oh, uh, so I, I almost kind of, I almost miss shitting on TLJ. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's like a nostalgia trip. Here you go. Oh, it was a hot take at the time. If I did, I would have given it a clickbait title about how it was a hot take. Anyway, not everybody has to like every movie and whatever, but whoa. I, uh, I appreciate doing people. What, what was the the guy we covered like what feels like a year ago now when he was like you have the right to like the last Jedi? You need to make sure we mention that in uh, any of our response videos as well. It's in the Constitution, people. I'm just glad she mentioned it. Mean whatever, but whenever I see people list the reasons they don't like it, I tend to see the same things popping up again and again, and those reasons are bad. Isn't that kind of our um? Our position with media analysis that we always get shat on for, as in, we're like, you can like or dislike, but the reasons you have can be, like, proven, you know, accurate or inaccurate. And, like, people hate us for that. Right, I just don't think the reasons she's going to tell... Well, it's just interesting that she's taking good. that position. It's like, oh, that's, hey, that's our position. Woohoo. We actually, like, we agree with that. Yeah, it's ironic, right? Isn't that, um, I, I... She seems she seems to give that impression that like yeah you can like or dislike it but your reasons are bad which is which does seem to imply that you're allowed to dislike. Well, it just sounds like she's saying you can actually be wrong. You can you can be wrong about your opinion on a movie. Which to me I'm like oh my god, like you on our team? What the fuck's going on here? But uh, obviously she's she gonna. About, she's but I don't know. About. She's I'm gonna work, take the complete opposite position. But hey. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I made a list. Number 10, Snoke didn't end up being anything. I don't know, Snoke was like a clever misdirection. We were supposed to there think he- There was clever about it. Okay. There was nothing clever about it. <laughs> what, when Here we go. When did I drop my, my data? Cause I read a bunch of research on this and I actually have research on specifically Star Wars and on expectancy violation theory on why it doesn't work. I don't know if I, sh if I need, if I should like wait to blow my load on it. Cause I'm gonna make a video about it as well, but clever misdirection is not what that was it was just stupid no, it was lazy nonsense like, what does it even direct you to if... right <laughs> well, it, 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 what's, yeah. what's the misdirection who's the actual bad guy kylo i guess oh no wait it's actually palpatine but we had no intention of doing that when we made this movie exactly it's like it's like a, someone ushering you to like you know see the movie and then they go uh -huh, that's a dead end you're like okay so where is the movie and then they're like, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> like, they're like okay you, <laughs> you take the force awakens you show that snoke is the person issuing the whole orders to the first order he's the leader of their organization he calls the shots he's the one who created them essentially brought up their rise to power he's like ha you just thought that he'd be important in some way and we're like, yeah, we, we yes, a, a logical person with the brain. Yes, we, we would have that notion in our heads. Yes, it wasn't clever Kylo that Ryan just decided, <laughs> lol, no. Because right, Kylo can't possibly do all that shit himself. He just, he just turned to the dark side. I'd like, like a few years ago. <laughs> His, uh, his, his his death, by the way, is not actually something that I definitively have an issue with because, like, I think you could have ha you could have killed him in the second movie, and I think you could have done it well. But it's just the well, he had to die be because people wouldn't have expected anything else. I think um, after he killed Han, so that was going to have to happen uh, just via people's expectations. Wait, you're talking about Kylo Ren? But the funny thing is that Kylo would have had to have died um, 
or or at least have suffered the same or some kind of retribution for killing Han. Uh, I don't think that people would have accepted anything else. And the research that I have on that is is consistent. Um, in terms of the Snoke stuff, uh, the, all this. Oh, it's just, it's a, it just violated my, our expectations. We wanted a big bad and oh, it was a violation. No, guess what? People don't like that. Psychologically, they don't like that. It, it I have so much research on this at this point and I, I've read it for a long time. It's not new stuff to me, but it's, it's just very silly to me that you would say, oh, it's, it's a subversion of expectations. No, it's not. It's that you didn't know what the fuck you were doing. That's what it is. Well, um, she liked it. So how do you explain that? Uh, I mean, people, you're allowed to like bad shit. Anyone's allowed to like, again, we'll go back to that. You're allowed to like something and it still be bad and it still doesn't make any sense. The fundamental issue for me was just that Snoke is the obvious connecting piece between the original trilogy and the sequel trilogy. He was, he was everything we needed to understand how the hell everything happened and he just gets killed and you're like, oh, uh, why did, okay. And then, and then obviously because the, you were expecting him to be important. So oh, it turns out he, he wasn't, even though he clearly is. I was going to say he's important whether or not he's dead. He's still important. Yeah. He's, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's the, the lore is very, very, very explicit that he is essential to these events happening. Like if, if the emperor dies in episode six and everyone's like, well, it doesn't matter. He's not important. Like that's what the point of that scene is. He's not important, but I can't even say that anymore. Cause he's not even dead, but, uh, Oh, I love canon. It's a, it's a fun concept. I don't know. Snoke was like a clever misdirection. We were supposed to think he was our big generic villain guy, and then he was dispatched so a crazed loose cannon could step in. And that's more exciting to me. Oh my well, god. Well, 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 well. Where are we thing. now? <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah. I'm sorry, that didn't age well, did it? Yeah, that aged really great. <laughs> this delicious two-year-old glass of milk is delicious. <laughs> like, I got my last Jedi pillow and my big fucking porg. Hey man, you Jeb, guys Jeb just didn't like it. <laughs> to sleeping. be fair, I, I would like, like that it. big porg pillow just because it looks comfy. Just saying. I don't like porgs, but it looks comfy. No, it might be. It might be. I, I could see it also being pretty awkward to try and sort of rest on. Maybe... When you're like reading a book, you could sit against it, but sleeping on it, I don't know if it would, be, it would be hard to sort of get in a comfy position. It's important that we analyze that. What was generic about Snoke? That he was big, powerful, and he monologued. Um, he wore golden clothes. What a what a generic fatty. He has a scarred face. That's generic. Yeah. But Kylo's not generic. I mean, in the sense that the writing is terrible for him, and we don't know what the fuck's going on. And he's a crazy wild card character. He just does whatever. I guess we don't. We've never seen that. I was gonna say, like, wouldn't isn't Snoke your chance to be non-generic to establish? Like I say that in my videos, like Snoke was this opportunity to be like, let's make a new villain in the Star Wars universe. And what yeah. the fact that he's God means, like, nah, he's not gonna be interesting. It's like, okay, okay, all right, I guess. That's uh, judging people by their looks, and that's terrible. No one should ever do that, right? right. Yeah, Jenny. Mm -hmm. Snoke was lame. Snoke wasn't lame. Well, if Snoke was lame, make him unlame. Yeah. Why did you make? Why did they make him lame then? How come a lame person was the the head of this organization? He could do lightning and force control minds across galaxies or whatever. Like, um, is that lame? Like. He was a he was a, pretty much a blank slate as of Force Awakens. There's a couple of things you have yeah. to keep, it, which is that he likes to stick to the shadows, which Ryan Johnson yeah. blew out. He was just like, okay. Oh, here um, he is. Yeah. The, hmm. But also, why would that be possibly a good thing for your main villain to be lame? Like, I I mean, even if it's established in the first film, it would be like, uh, oh, it's a good thing that Darth Vader is lame. If we look at the original trilogy, why would that in any way be a good thing? Well, or like, even seeing like Darth Maul is lame. People thought Darth Maul was cool, even if I mean, <laughs> for she's all she's setting it there. up here that Snow. It is a good thing that Snoke was lame because that way we could have a non-lame character. Because well, Kylo is definitely good that he died not lame because he's lame, right? Yeah, I was like, I don't, I don't see how you're like, yeah, Snoke was but, lame, but Kylo definitely not lame at all. He is super cool. And like, for people being like, you didn't have enough time to sort of 
improve him. A lot of people were saying Thanos was lame right up until Infinity War, because, like, we don't know anything about him. He's a crappy generic villain, monologuing guy, probably. And then you watch no, the film, it's like, oh, anything. shit, they actually... It's like, yeah, you could have had Snoke basically argue that um, we cannot let the Empire fail again because it leads the world to chaos. Like, you could just have him be that character. Like the guy in Mandalorian. Um, exactly. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Yeah, the Mandalorian guy. Uh, just have him course. be invested in the idea that the Empire is the best thing for the universe. Not too hard. Much more interesting than, I like power just like the Emperor did. You're like, okay. There's the hilarious discontinuity between the Mandalorian being like the Empire brings peace and, and stability whereas <laughs> the Empire as we see in the films just blows everything up. But well, okay. fucking hell yeah, yeah. especially compared to the First Order. He's like, we need to reestablish the Empire. It's like, oh they do and then they threaten to just blow up everything after blowing up five planets. It's like, fucking hell stop blowing things Six. up, JJ. Six planets. Oh yeah, Kojimi. Kojimi, top. yeah. They blew up we're Which was really two, impactful, two by the way. It's an episode. You could really tell that Zori Bliss and Babu Frick cared about Kojimi getting blown up. Oh, yeah. Because the they first thing sad. is that like, they come in and he's like, hey! <laughs> and, he's, yeah. He's like, I'm fucking happy all those people are dead. And then you'd have to do a scene like in Infinity War with Thor. You'd have to be, if you were trying to repair it, it turns out Babu Frick does that because he's hiding his depression. Like, he's constantly yeah. saying yay. He's a really deep character. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, and the reaching off screen to pick up a <laughs> bottle and just down. <laughs> he um, he starts to build an, an evil like army of robots. Babu Frick does because he's so full of pain. Like, how could the Republic have ever allowed this? I'll make sure the Republic never uh, exists again. And so, boom, you have the Clone Wars again. So that's it's, strange. It's, it's, um... it's like poetry. From chat, you got, what could have been should not be used as an argument against what's in the text of the film. Come on, Mauler. Like, what do you mean? We're talking about TLJ as a hypothetical film right now. She, she's making the claim that it's good that Snoke was killed because he was lame. And it's like, well, Ryan Johnson made him lame. He didn't have to. No, he really didn't. He could and have done anything he wanted. The, I will say this about the research on that that I read, is that people actually really liked Kylo after TLJ. They, they, because they thought that he was the only character who had any personality. And I think that when you have nothing but characters that are personality less or characters that are, are breaking everything that you expect from them, Kyla was the only character from this movie who did have any capacity because he didn't give anything to, to Poe or Finn, who were the other character, or Ray, obviously, who had any capacity to have any character growth. They didn't get anything. So the only character who had any growth was Kylo Ren, and then that, of course, got just shit on. So, and it, was, like and it was it wasn't real, it. and it wasn't even real growth. It was bullshit. The whole f it not it was all hey crap. hey he forgave oh, himself. Oh, he forgives himself every <laughs> five minutes. If that's not growth, I don't he, know what is. He's like some guy who gets who feels bad about masturbating, and then just like, oh, I feel bad about that, and just immediately forgives himself every yeah, time. He's he like, it's okay. Like it's that. been like a day. You, you deserve uh, that wank. I remember looking forward to the idea that we were going to watch a dark side training session between Kylo and Snoke, and it would give you loads of excuses to have them say a whole bunch of things. It would give us a whole bunch of information about the characters. Have we seen that yet? And the world, not in the mainline movies. It's in uh, it's in the shows, from what I understand. In either Clone Wars or Rebels or something, but um, yeah, would be would be neat to hear from Snoke why the dark side is actually like the correct decision, you know, in the mainline movies. Would, would, there's loads of opportunities you have to do all these different things, but nope, Snoke was lame, so killing him was the good decision. It's like, oh, mm -hmm. right. why was he lame? We made him that way. He's like, oh, oh uh, really? Before we go forward, because I'm going to be referencing the study a little bit. It's a study. Sorry, uh, it's a study from Bonus Matthews and Wolf, 2019. It's called The Impact of Moral Expectancy Violations on Audiences' Parasocial Relationships with Movie Heroes and Villains. It's published just about three weeks ago in Communication Research. It is a study specifically on, on The Last Jedi. Check it out. It's in Communication Research. If you Google Communication Research Journal, you will find the study I'm talking about. And then you can go to scihub.tw. Um, and you can pull up the study, no problem. Read it yourself. It's very interesting. Just want to make very clear what I'm I'm talking about here, because people always ask me where I get my studies, where I get my research. Check it out, guys. The study found that like women don't hate Star Wars and stuff like that. Like yes, it, it's they very interesting. Do. 
Sorry, they don't. Or should I say LeMay? Like in Game of Thrones with the Red Wedding, I thought the whole reason everybody thought that was clever is that it showed that a character you thought was invincible because of established tropes they fulfilled could actually just be unceremoniously killed off. Again, the, the him getting killed isn't necessarily the problem. Like, you could still have him be killed yeah. in TLJ. I, I'm not, that's not really where my issue lies exactly. <laughs> Um, him being killed gives us the impression it's like, oh god, we're not gonna know anything else about him now, because he can't speak anymore. <laughs> like, he's fucking dead. <laughs> um, so, yeah.